Yeah. So this comes from Jeepster, right? So since y'all are artists, what are you, what um, are your thoughts on AI? Um, so my my thoughts are that I think it's morally ambiguous. Um, I think that this is a huge technological apparatus that sources um, artists' content yeah. uh, illegally, and be- and I say illegally because it is without consent or copyright or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it allows um, those uh, AI models to be trained on a huge subset of basically scraping the internet of of these things. Now, of course, each AI is a little different in how they do that, right? But um, I would say, like, I'm I'm not a fan of that. Um, and I would say that uh, that I think it's pretty morally dubious. Um, hmm. I th- I think at the very least, artists should be be asking permission, and they should be receiving a cut. Um, I could go on, but I will let Nick um, put in his really two cents quick, before. Though. What version of AI do you like that you want to experiment with? Okay. So what <laughs> I want to all negatives. That's 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 it's not right. all negative. So so yeah, so so I'll say this. I think that um the technology itself is pretty revolutionary and it presents interesting ways to change how uh like our process for for producing art, right? Um even even for ideation. So one thing is that um and I'm currently doing this, I recently just got I, I bought an awesome graphics card and I redid my, my, my PC rig and, um, uh, me and my friend working on Eon, um, we are going to take a uh, stable diffusion and run it locally mm-hmm. and train it only on the artwork I've done for Eon. Um, I have a lot of images that isn't to say that that's going to be enough for the uh, training model, but I want to continually cultivate that and feeding it my art. So I can then train it on various outputs. We're going to be yeah. pairing that with something called Comfy UI, which is a node-based program that or, or node-based interface, which is where sick. you can yeah, where you can uh, where you can you know like pipe in new stuff, filters, new stuff for the uh, um, for for the AI to like ideate on. Yeah, and uh, and we want to do that locally. So I'm not skimming off any. I'm not ripping off any other artist material. I'm just using my stuff. And like, let's say it's like, look, I want to explore a new spaceship design, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's already trained on a lot of spaceship designs that I do because I do a, quite a bit of them, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, just like, okay, uh, give me a spaceship that looks like um, a spear or like, mm-hmm. or that reminds reminds me of a spear, right? Or a gun, right? Um, or just play around with shapes, you know? Um, I think I think the potential is is crazy. And of course, since I have I have just begun doing it. I'm sure there's ideas that are yet to be discovered, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, it's also very fresh to the AI. Very fresh. It's amazing yeah. how good it is too. Um, so guilty as uh, I have been using AI in some of our deep dives and breakdown videos. Technically, I have been using AI to create stuff for his dark materials. There's a lot of stuff in the book and a lot of non-artwork visuals that I wasn't able to find and a lot of stuff the show didn't even cover too which I did create stuff for Land of the Dead and other characters and stuff like that and I know Kyle was a little angry with me at the time and uh, I wasn't angry I just I he wouldn't talk to me for three weeks no my god (laughs) I'm just joking (laughs) but I was just I I did express my concern I definitely did that and I I used it very spare. I don't think I used it over the top. And it was basically, I, you know, though, I did probably steal people's artwork, to be honest. And I used it for content because Kyle has in the past done content where he he's literally was drawing every single frame. You're not frame, but every single image we would use in a breakdown video. And it would take him months to complete because obviously... He doesn't have all day to do this. He also works and we both work. We both have full-time jobs and this is just like a little hobby for us on the side. We really enjoy just com- coming up here and talking and stuff. And I was just like, well, I want to be able to show what we're talking about, especially for deep dive stuff. And I, I, I also currently used it on our last couple of Dune ones. I know for sure I used it in the Orange Catholic Bible because there was just stuff I couldn't find on the internet of stuff. And yes, I'm gu- guilty. Well, there's well, okay. Here and, and here's another thing, and this is something I'm guilty of, and and I think this was, 
this this question was posed in a in an article I was reading, um, mm. but it, it really drove home the point in that it's like, look, like I mean, it, it basically posited like, look, you've you've used other you know like techn like technologies that subvert other industries, right? Yeah. Um, and like, where where were you then? Where when you were pirating music? Um, yeah. Or was your concern for the for the musicians that that made it right? Um, where, you know, um, and and I couldn't come up with a good answer, yeah. and and so it's like it's kind of now now that the ball's in our court as artists, right? Yeah. Um, now now it's kind of like now I I guess I you know it's really changed my perspective. I think. Um, yeah, no, it's true, and but it's all how you use technology, I guess. So. And it's it's one of those things you have to adapt or you fall behind. Yeah. Because if this takes off and becomes the new norm, I mean, think about how many Photoshop images that people took from other images and they Photoshopped to make it their own. Or think about even going back to Andy Warhol, him doing screen prints of other people's artworks and prints and just duplicating it many times to creating artwork or reproducing someone else's content or characters like you know, and making it his own. So it's, it's, it's a tough line with art, right? Cause all art is kind of even using techniques used by other people and they expound upon it and stuff. So technique, I, it's, it's such a tricky, touchy subject depending on whose side you're on and what, what you're using it for. Cause I have a buddy who also creates content on the internet and he sees this as a saving grace or not saving grace, but he sees it as a way to help him with his An enhancement yeah with with making content because like honestly i don't know how good those move those videos would have been with our deep dives if we didn't have a couple of decent images to show i mean it would be i guess it would have been fine if you just want to hear my nasty voice and look at my ugly face for 20 Man. minutes but I, I really like i'm a visual learner i'm a very visual person and i that that's why i've i've chosen for azart to always even just have it a still image up when possible one i forget people's names pretty quickly in shows it also helps me when i'm talking about someone i got the image up there and two i'm a visual learner so i ah, but ai though is it 100 percent good Ooh, we will see when time, but it's scary right now because there's no regulations on it. It's just kind of right. the wild west and it can go anywhere from here. And I think my closing statement on that is like, it's uh, it's technology. It can be used for good or ill. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's still very, it's a very, very young technology. Yeah. And uh, I think Nick, you were right. Is that, uh, you know, it's probably going to take off even much more than it already has. Um, and it's probably going to be augmented into a lot of workflows in the yeah. future. So it's kind of get on board or um, be left in the wayside. Behind. Yeah. Yeah. And you, it's interesting when I um, worked on Futurama, I was a 3D artist on Futurama where I did animation and I modeled and stuff. And I was talking to one of the 2D artists on the show. And he was he was older. He was an older gentleman and he was desperately trying to learn 3D because there was less and less 2d jobs for him to do work on so he was doing everything he can to just catch up with the industry and what's what i see about ai the reason why i'm using it right now one to always be involved with new technology because it's i don't want to get left behind in the dust when it comes to my technology and career and stuff like that i mean even kyle starts starting to use it too in his own way but he's using it because it's definitely it's definitely going to go this way. And what sucks is it's going to definitely cut out jobs and it's going to be harsh to find jobs because AI is going to be taking a lot of the jobs, but there's going to be a lot of job openings for people that know how to use AI really well and to their advantage. So we, we will definitely see a shift in the next coming years for sure. But for now, for the next three years, I ah, hope it's three years. A lot of artists are probably guaranteed because it's not as creative as artists. Don't get me wrong. The stuff is very beautiful and it can render stuff good, but there's something about a human mind creating something new. I think Casey Neistat, he did a video where he allowed chat GPT to write his script for his video and it was very robotic and plain, but it gave him establishing shots. It told him what to do, what mm. to say in the shot and how to cut different shots. He did it to the T. I highly recommend watching his video. It's very interesting to see it 
go on, but he's like, there's no soul or life. It's just, it's seeing all the content Casey's done and kind of spitting out something that would be a Casey video, but it's not a Casey video. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has a couple of the bare bones, but it doesn't have the reason why people love Casey. Use, use that human element to give your creations heart and soul and for the process of it, leverage, leverage the technology, yeah. right? But, but never, never forget that core. <laughs>